Last week, I got the landing gear done for the big heavy lifter that we're working on. And I'm kind of excited about this one because it was it was looking good. You know, it was a good, uh, you know, kind of 80-20 project. But if you look right here, you can see kind of what I got going on. This is, you know, the motor arm right here. And then you can see the shock in there. And um, I think it actually it's going to work out really well but it was a little inadvertent, sort of. I ordered the shock online, the shocks, and I was trying to find something that I thought would be reasonable, and um, I wasn't initially thinking uh, about having it at such a, an angle here, but all I could find was little RC hobby shocks, uh, go-kart shocks, mini bike shocks, and full-size you know, auto automotive shocks. And so this is a go-kart shock that's in here, and it will support up to about 400, 450 pounds. And so if we're only going to be lifting a load of, say, 220-ish pounds, I mean, that's frame and everything included, then having a 400 and some pound shock on each leg doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's not even really going to flex. So hence why we've got the angle on here so that we could, um, you know, get, get more force onto this. And the nice thing, though, here's, here's what really is nice about this whole affair right here is I, uh, I want to show you that as you get zoomed in here, all of these parts and pieces on the 8020 track are movable. So you look around the frame here, you can see that this is all 8020 aluminum extrusion. And that's pretty typical for, for me at least, you know, for fabbing together things. Uh, and then, yeah, maybe it looked a little bit hokey to begin with. I don't even want to say hokey exactly. It was just felt prototypey, right? But then we start looking at this. And so you see these brackets right here, they slide right into the track, as does the motor over there and the, the fitting and couplers up on top there for the motor um, uh, cabling, okay? And so then what this ends up giving me is right up at the top where the shock meets the top arm or either or where the pivot point is, I can move this stuff around and I can get whatever type of leverage or height out of this that I would like to get. So it's very customizable. And there was a thing in the beginning of this that I was promoting uh, about the whole concept of this is in this future of drones everywhere, we are, are we going to have the DJI style ones? Is that what, you know, because that seems to be the go-to for now people getting into this. And I would say that the majority of the people are kind of behind the curve here on that. And then, of course, we have the freestyle high-speed racing drones that we do. And there's that as well. Not, um, I mean, they're stable, but, you know, they're, they're for kind of whipping around. And, and then there's something like this. And so we're looking at this as what we call it a, an aerial heavy lift uh, service platform, something like that. Go with that kind of a name here. And then the concept ends up being this thing here can change shape and re be rebuilt as we see fit. And I'm really digging that idea. Your service truck in this future doesn't have, you know, one, two, three, four drones inside. It has a whole bunch of aluminum extrusion, bracketry, and motors and such. And then you just put them together as you see fit to build a vehicle per the load that you need to lift. Then here is the motor that we've seen before and you can see in the uh, well in the front here we have the bracket where um, you know the what we're going to do is we're going to make a banana jack cable that's going to jack into this and so that's so we can easily take the thing apart and you can see everything is kind of you know heat shrunk inside there. And then the motor here, again, is on this milled plate that we made. The reason for all the little ribs right here is because underneath the motor there, they had the same matching ribs, and there's cooling fins under there. I mentioned that in the last video, so that's why that is. And then, as well, you can see the 8020 bracketry uh, holding it all together. Like I was saying, this is kind of cobbled together feeling seeming, but it's all, it, it, it ends up being able to, um, well, it's kind of a pain in the ass to put it together, but it's not super duper hard, right? It's just a pain, but pretty easy to take apart. And then again, if you look at that motor there with the coupler and the wire that's going to be on it, you can easily just undo this, slide the whole thing off the track, and then 
you know, uh, adjust, maybe put in a new leg, a longer leg, a shorter leg, different motor, motor goes out, you just replace it. Now, as you'd imagine, I designed this in Fusion 360. The foot here, uh, when it comes to building something like this, I could have had the attachment point and everything all made out of one piece of aluminum, but you look around your shop, you kind of see what you have or what you can get. I had half an inch aluminum. I do have one inch. I do actually have uh, some some big chunks of like two and a quarter inch thick aluminum stock, but I'm not going to use that for this. So I have half inch, and so I designed this specifically to fit within that envelope. And then as far as creating the attachment right here, I designed that to be, you know, thinking around, thinking how am I going to do this? So I say, well, I'll make it out of half an inch, and I'll make it fit inside this slot right here. So that was kind of the plan and then some holes for some fasteners so you can anchor it in there and kind of theorize, you know, are those fasteners going to be okay and everything for the force that might be putting on this, right? Seems okay to me. So then you take the whole mess and you put it all together and then you end up with, I ended up with a little bit of excess right here, you know, because it's a square thing in a round hole. And so that, you know, in a way would not work. So you could take this part right here and do a flip operation on it on the mill, put it in a vise, hold it up here, and then cut that little edge off. But that seems kind of silly for this. And so it's easy enough to just take this and uh, take a die grinder and, and lop the edges off, and then it will fit nicely inside there. Then, of course, all the rest of the bracketry made in Fusion as well. One addition, since I'm looking at this right here right now, if I go back here to the foot, I know, knew that this corner, all the sharp corners here, they're not going to get cut. I, I knew this, right? So as kind of a habit that I kind of want to preach to people, I guess, to say to do is if you know the end mill is not going to get in the corner, then go ahead and put a fillet on there so that you actually see the part as it will be finished, okay? I did not do that because I knew the end mill wouldn't get in there and maybe in the future I might like to try to make this sharper so I thought maybe I might do an operation where I go down to an eighth inch end mill or smaller just to try to pick out the corners. So I thought I'd just throw that in there that typically I think it's a pretty good idea to make the part look as it's going to be when it gets cut out so you can kind of see any snags right here because you don't want to work all the time on the part, get it all done and look at it and go, oh man, I forgot about that end mill in the corner. The edges are too round. I don't like the look of it. You could have figured that out here. Anyways, that's why I didn't do it. Then um, obviously here I am milling the thing. I had a couple problems here. They, they, one, there's some toolpath issues going on. There's some depths of cut that weren't quite right. But as you can see, the bigger problem right here is the the step down so the step down i thought as usual that you know maybe i could just go get it done quick and then i'll hand sand it and you think i would learn because this right here it's a little bit kind of polished but holy piss it took about uh you know an hour's worth of you know polishing to get it to this state right here so absolutely definitely the next time we're going to be using a ball mill or at least a bull nose and coming up with a, a lot finer step down and right now, I have it just kind of hanging here, but I think it's going to work out really well. I like, of course, the looks of it, you know, my little space foot. I'm going to need to add some springs to the back, though, to kind of uh, keep it in place so it doesn't flip around too much. But anyways, that's it. That's it for the current update right now. We've got three more being made as we speak. Should be done soon.